Okay. Hello, everyone. Okay, so now I'm doing example video. And we're just going to go over examples of everything that I was just talking about. And <clears throat> I want to be thorough with the examples and give a lot of examples because I've taken too many courses and things where they've only given me like, you know, a few charts at the end of talking for hours about things. And um, I'm sure some of y'all might know how that is too. And so I'm going to try to be thorough with this. So I may only get to cover Venus and Mercury's delighting examples in this video. So, yeah, so we're talking about Venus and Mercury delighting each other here, but this is, you know, I haven't gone into Mercury stuff, so this is from the perspective of Venus being delighted. I should be more clear about that. Yeah, so this is Venus delighted by Mercury, basically. And again, to reiterate, go and watch the video where I explained all of that you know, make sure you've watched that video. But this happens when Venus is in Virgo or in Gemini or whenever it's conjunct Mercury or in rare cases when it's far enough for them to be planetary aspecting. But of course, that would only be a little bit. When the planet is in the sign, it's the full measure of delight. So when Venus is in Gemini, excuse me, or right conjunct Mercury, it's the full measure of delight. And then if you know, if they're far away in aspect, that's showing just a little bit. Okay, let me re readjust myself here. Okay. All right, so this is an example. Uh, this is a person. He's not famous. Um, he is a Leo ascendant, sun in the second house, Rahu Mars in the ascendant. You notice he has Venus and Mercury and Jupiter and Saturn all in Libra in the third house. So this is a lot of avashas going on. And this Venus is, is delighted by Mercury, but also being delighted by Jupiter. But I'm not going to talk about that in this video. Um, but Venus is here with Mercury and being delighted. So like I said, how Mercury, uh, you know, is just all, is like Lord Vishnu and Venus is like Lakshmi. And together they make this wonderful combination where there's all these possibilities uh, all this activity, but there's also this rajasic quality of this restlessness, you know, um, and Venus and Mercury are both the rajas planets, which means that they're both the planets that make us feel like I did this well, like, ooh, look at me, I, you know, I handled that so skillfully, I'm like, you know what I mean, that's Mercury, or oh, wow, I'm just really worthy of being loved, I'm just really cherishable, and, and look at how I, I'm so good, and I, sh and I make good deals with everyone, and bring harmony into the world, and that would be like Venus. And so when it's delighting each other in the third house, this person, this person is very into like how they communicate and how they express and they're very witty and very funny and very clever. And they're uh, ever since a young age, they had this, you know, preternatural gift of, of having the gift of gab and being a good speaker and being able to entertain people really well. And, you know, the Libra is the sign of the public and has to do with entertaining. Third house has to do with your skills and you know, showing off your skills and in, in, in exhibiting and expressing yourself and entertainment as well. And so, yeah, this guy is, is, is very much into that. And he's an entertainer. He also really loves entertainment. So he knows about like all of the, the best TV shows and all of the best movies. And, you know, he's very just clued in to what's going on in pop culture because of the Libra. You know, Libra is the son of the public. Libra is the son of pop culture. And so it's really fascinating, like the planets that you have in Libra can determine and can say it, have a little say on how you see the world. So people with like Rahu and Libra don't like the world and see it as a weird place more often than not. Um, you know, per person with uh, Jupiter starved in Libra tends to feel like the world is, is more unfair for them at times or, or you know, th these sorts of things. So this person enjoys the world in general. You know, this is a worldly person and he enjoys the world by having all those planets in Libra. And so that is a, that Venus there is a good indication of good karmas that we could say for this person in, in, to be experienced in the world. Um, and it would be with regards to like interactions, your, your curiosities, your interests. He's a very curious person. He's very, very good with his hands. You know, the third house is your hands. He's always uh, building and making crafts and learning new things. He's built all kinds of, of things. He never has to hire anyone to build stuff. That's also because he's a Leo and because he has that, he has Mars and Rahu on the Ascendant. 
And so it's very important for him to learn like, um, to, to, you know, build and engineer things more. Um, you know, he builds like if he needed a deck or something, he builds it himself, of course, you know, and, and that's, you would expect that with this chart. K2 is in the seventh, you know, even more indicating this really social person, K2 being in an air sign. And so at times he can be, uh, it can be very tough for him because the evolutionary goal of Rahu and Leo is forcing him to be more on his own and focus more on himself. But he's a very, very social individual. Um, and, you know, if you met this person when he was young, he just had this precocious, preternatural gift for, you know, uh, knowing business, knowing how to communicate to people, being a good people person, like his, his business skills, his retail skills. He ran like five businesses before he was even 25. He had like, he had a five different shops and um, he had his hands in a lot of different places. He's very multi-talented. Again, that's Mercury. That get, makes one very multi-talented. Um, and he does have a younger sibling too, just so you know, because that's the third house is younger siblings. Um, so yeah, this is a pretty good example of Mercury delighting, or sorry, Mercury delighting Venus. Yes. <clears throat> so in the third house, he's also a musician. He plays guitar. So that's like instruments, you know? Um, so there, and he's also always collecting things, you know, like he's got all these toys or all these like, like weird collectibles. Um, that's also actually just so you guys know, the second house is really the house of collectibles and that sun is his ruling planet is in the second house, but the Lord of that is Mercury and it's delighting Venus in the third and you know, all that rajasicness in the third of his interests. So it kind of shows like this desire to, um, you know, this materialistic quality to collect more and to have more and things, um, but he, uh, that's also his pada. So he is a successful person. Um, as a result, if you know about the pada and the Srimanta stuff, I don't have time to go into that here though. But basically, uh, yeah, Venus, Mercury, um, they can do really well. He can be a little bit restless though. Um, he's always got to have new things to entertain him. He doesn't really stay the course as much as he needs to, especially having Rahu and Leo. He doesn't stay the course with, um, you know, this one thing like, playing music or this thing or that thing. He kind of jumps around a little too much, too much. And uh, he might be a lot happier if he stayed the course. Um, but that's the thing is that Ver uh, Venus delighted by Mercury is puts, puts so much restlessness and rajasicness on things that it's one gets really bored easily. So like even with friends, when he's hanging out with friends, he tends to, you know, not keep, keep the same friends around for a long time forever because he gets bored or then he'll be rude or insult them or this or that, or he'll just get bored. You know what I mean? Um, so there, this is kind of an interesting placement. There's good and bad to it as well. It's good to know about this one. Okay. Let's see here. Um, it's not letting me, uh, it's kind of glitched for a second. I hope you guys can see can see this. So this is the chart of Bob Dylan. Um, he has Venus and Mercury in the seventh. So Venus is in the sign of Mercury, delighted by Mercury in that way, and it's with Mercury. So this is a really strong delight of Venus from Mercury. And so it's in the seventh house of the public. So he's a very famous musician. He's definitely had a lot of delight, a lot of praise from the public, a lot of validation. What's funny though is he's got Mars with K2 and Pisces, so he doesn't care about any of that. And uh, that Mars and K2 also, like how I was just saying, third house of instruments, Bob Dylan had the K2 and Mars in the third, so he really knew his instrument well, but also knew the limitations of it, which is what you'll find when you see a person with Mars and K2 conjunct. Um, they're very good at solving problems, but they're like very hesitant and they know the limitations of their will and their might and that sometimes they just can't fix the problem. And what's neat about that is that, you know, he had to move into electric guitars and he was like hated for that, but he brought, he was a folk musician starting out acoustic and he felt the limitations of that. And, um, his Swampsha, he has Rahu with the Atmakarika and the Swampsha. So he needed to be a pioneering person. So he ended up playing electric guitars and got a lot of, um, got a lot of crap, crap for that, um, which sometimes can happen as well when Rahu's in your 10th house. 
anyways, we're talking here. We're here to talk about Venus and Mercury. But again, this tons of activity with the public, tons of restlessness. Um, Venus is also with the sun, so it is agitated. So this is an example of the agitation of Asha as well. So like, think about how the sun represents um, authorities, but the sun rules the ninth house for him. And so it deals with like culture. And, uh, you know, that's kind of interesting because like he, he's very, a lot of his music is very activist music for the time, like protest songs, talking about the problems with our society and the problems with our culture. And that can be shown by his Venus being agitated by the sun, the, the planet of um, like Western culture and as well as the ninth house Lord. But then his ninth cusp Lord has got Rahu in it too. So that's another indication that you're born in a culture that you don't identify with and that you don't feel supported by. Um, so yeah, so he, you know, also here's another thing, like the Venus and Mercury makes one really restless. It makes one feel kind of like stimulated and curious and exciting and love that thing, but then restless with it and gets bored with it. So the seventh house is like your impact on the public and your legacy. Well, Bob Dylan's produced like, like 10 times more albums than even other really successful musicians. He's had a ridiculous impact on the public. And so many of these albums are like not filler. They're just like way, way better than the best album that all these other people have made. And so, you know, that's kind of like, well, that makes sense because why would you keep feeling driven to do this? Like what in the world possessed him to keep making more and more album after album after album of art like why wasn't he content and so it's probably this venus mercury you know this um delight but the stimulation of wanting more of that um so yeah it's very interesting stuff um he he uh you know he he was he was someone who obviously experienced a lot of the good things that the world had to offer. I'm sure he had a lot of experiences of pleasure of women, you know, uh, Venus things, but he also has shown that he's not fulfilled by that because, you know, he's, he's had times where he went and he became Christian and, you know, separated from his sort of rock star lifestyle and he's gone back and forth with it. So you can tell he's had issues with, desires and with the way the world goes and has had spiritual tendencies with the Jupiter out in the um, and has sort of struggled with that. So that's sort of an example with Bob Dylan, one of the great muses of the 20th century. You know, you can say whatever you want in the comments, but Bob Dylan's one of the best musicians on the planet ever. And that, that chart shows it with the Mahapurusha yogas and everything. So if you know your charts and you want to see the chart of a good artist, go look at that. Um, and if you don't, you know, if you don't like Bob Dylan, I'm sorry. I feel bad for you. But um, yeah, so Daniel, uh, this guy named Daniel, he's not, uh, he's not a famous person. He's just a guy that I know. Um, he has Venus and Mercury in the Ascendant, and he is a chef, and he cooks. And so you see you have this Taurus, the sign of food, you see, and Venus is in the Ascendant, the ruling planet is in the body. Um, and he's got a good, healthy body um, overall as well. and um, Venus and Mercury in the Ascendant makes one, uh, you know, really curious. And, and he's, a, he's a chef, so he's experimenting. And he even, like, uh, goes to other countries to experiment with food. And, you know, like, foreign foods are involved because Rahu aspects, Rashi aspects his second house. And his second house is Jupiter and Mars there, too, delighting each other. Um, so it's kind of like the Lord of the second house of food is also delighted by Venus. The Lord of the second being Mercury is also with Venus being delighted. So yeah, so this person who really loves food and is kind of restless in the same way as there's, there's never, uh, he wakes up thinking about food, you know, and, and uh, you know, it's just kind of interesting because he's also a very, very spiritual person, but, um, and he, so he's not very materialistic or worldly person, but except for when it comes to food, he loves his food and he's, um, and it's part of his work. You know, the first house is your Dharma and your, uh, like your innate nature, what you're good at, your career skills. And so, yeah, so he's got that, uh, delight there. So he's always finding new, you know, things to make for food or always having it. There's always some new, new, exciting recipe or thing to be done. Um, 
but you can see that there's also like some restlessness there, restlessness there. Um, you know, the desire for new recipes, new things. And when we don't eat for, in my opinion, like when you don't eat for health and spirituality reasons and you're just eating for pleasure, you can end up, you know, you never end up fulfilled that way. And so that kind of can be shown when someone has a Venus Mercury uh, placement. But it, he still does a lot of really good things with this. And that's probably because it's really what good dignity. Um, and, you know, so yeah, Venus and Mercury here, they're in very good dignity. So overall, he's a great chef. He provides, he cooks really good meals. He provides for people. He does good with his dharma, with his Venusian dharma in this regard. And, um, but he sort of is still very like restless and doesn't feel like, um, yeah, there's a rajasic quality to it, we could say. I don't know how to explain it. Um, now we come to the chart of uh, David Wilcock. So yeah, this is a guy named uh, David Wilcock. He's a famous researcher in the sort of alternative metaphysical world and in the occult world. He's well known um, because he has been like talking about crazy, uh, you know, things like UFOs. I think that's like his main thing, like extraterrestrials and UFOs. And he's been talking about that stuff on the internet since like the internet first started, like since the mid nineties, like 98 or something. And, you know, he can tell, you can tell, like, he really cares about it and stuff. And you can tell that from his chart when we go into this. And so he's actually, like, had, he claims, at least, he claims that he has had, uh, you know, over the last, like, 20 years of being, like, one of the only people who's outspokenly, like, talking about UFOs and these cover-ups and research and stuff like that, that all these insiders and white hats and whistleblowers supposedly have, like, come to him and, like, confided him or given him accounts and he says that so many of these people have said the exact same things like that from separate compartmentalized places of the world and the government and so forth. He's sort of like built up um, his himself as a as a researcher of all these like weird, you know, secrets and, and hidden things. And he claims to have had a lot of. Uh, yeah, a lot of these like supposed insider people that contact him that he connects to and talks to and gets information from. Now, uh, you guys, you know, make up your own opinions about that. I don't care what you have to say, if, you know, about this or that. Um, I use astrology to determine whether things are correct or not. That's what I do. So if you want to do that too, then you're probably an astrologer and you can join me in this fun little adventure. So, um, but I don't really care what your beliefs are. You can if you comment them, I might delete them, I might leave them up. Sometimes people say such ridiculous things in YouTube, in YouTube comments that I like to leave them up because it's like you made yourself look so crazy there that it's almost, you know, better that I don't buy in any way. But so this is a controversial subject and he's considered like totally kooky and fake news and just completely crazy in the mainstream world. But, you know, let's take a look at the chart. So the chart is a Scorpio, so right away that makes sense because his life's about finding out the secrets of the world, feeling the vulnerabilities, um, how to how to you know fulfill that. His ruling planet Mars is in the third house. Well, it's exalted there, so that's very good. Third house of research. Rahu is the planet of the paranormal. Rahu makes us kind of unsure and shaky a little bit at times, but it's with an exalted Mars. And the Lord of Rahu is, um, it is delighted. It isn't a great friend dignity, but it's in the eighth house. But the eighth house makes sense because that's what he's researching, is the occult and the hidden side of the world. This Rahu further is aspected by an exalted moon. So that's pretty nice. So there's the, really the Rahu has just gotten exalted and another exalted energy on it. So that's really quite good, you know? So... You know, I first heard about this guy before knowing his chart, and I intuitively felt like, yeah, he could be off about a lot of these things, and some of his beliefs I definitely don't agree with, so whatever you hear him say, don't think that Corey believes and subscribes to everything he says, that's not the case, but I'm like, I can think for myself, so I just enjoy being entertained by new ideas and things. Um, it doesn't threaten me, so I'm not going to freak out, I just won't believe it. Um, so... There are times when I've been like, okay, you're just, 
you know, that's, that's, a, that's a weird belief, or I don't agree with that, this or that. But in general, his research is insane. Like, he's, pr- he's, he's brought forth so much research that no one else has been able to convey to me or make any sense of. Um, he's written three really big books, and he wrote one book called The Source Field Investigations that has over a 1,000 peer-reviewed citations in it, and it's all about crazy paranormal things that, you know, people just ignore. So he's just this great, like, a uh, person who aggregates a bunch of data that other people found like he doesn't come up with it and he just c- brings it all together and that's interesting because mercury is his atmakarika and mercury is like the researcher and the aggregator and mercury doesn't necessarily always do a new thing himself he just brings and puts together all these pieces so it's kind of funny how this person has an exalted Venus delighting Mercury, his Atmakarika, and it's in the fifth house. And that's the house of past life karma, good past life karma. So it probably has to do with why he's famous and the celebrity and stuff. Also the strong moon in the seventh, the house of the public, like I've been talking about, having a benefic moon there, exalted. Um, but yeah, so with him, the fifth house is also like your creative intelligence. It's also writing. So he's written three books. He's been a New York Times bestseller. You know what I mean? And so being a New York Times bestselling author, yeah, you would expect the fifth house has something good about it. And it does. It has a proud Venus and it has that Venus also delighted by Mercury, but it's also agitated. Sorry, agitated should be to by the sun. So there is this agitation from authorities, you see? And again, the, the sun can represent like the Western culture. It can represent authorities. And in his case, it's the 10th, it rolls a 10th house and 9th cusp. So again, just more of authorities in his culture. So the culture he's born in does not agree with him, does not like this Venus, is feeling starved or thirsted by his Venus. But that doesn't change the fact that he's got a proud Venus and it's delighted by Mercury, you know, and that Mercury is not in debilitation. It's past the point of debilitation. So... Um, And it's retrograde, so it has a lot of strength. It's not combust. This is a very interesting chart, isn't it? Um, So he he has written three books. And, you know, you can tell by – see, here's the thing, is that he is kind of very, like, egotistical and – talks about himself a lot to promote himself. But that's the thing is that if you have Rahu with Mars, you like sometimes kind of have to do that. I've learned that I have Rahu with Mars. Um, No one else will basically because no one else like will uh, stand up for those concepts that you feel you have to have to express because it's your fight. It's like your battle to deal with. It's your thing to pioneer this new, you know, it's your job. And so the last thing a Rahu Mars person wants to do is talk about themselves or talk about their work or their research or talk about a concept that only they have in their mind because they're usually a very social person from past lives, like this exalted Venus person. Um, but they end up having to, and they can, and that stresses them out. And so they don't know if they're doing it enough and they don't know when to not do it or when to stop. It's that typical confusion of Rahu. So, um, so I can feel for him there because I read a lot of his stuff. I'm like, man, you're, you're just like, okay, you're just talking about, you're trying to prove this point you proved a million times because I've read your stuff before. But he doesn't feel like people have um, have acknowledged or validated his research. Um, so that's sort of just an issue he has to work out on his own. And he has this belief, this ninth house K2 belief that like, One day the extraterrestrials are just going to like show up and like give us all this technology and make us all just be enlightened. And that's the part that I think is like, okay, that's your K2 ninth house. That's a little bit of delusion there. Again, K2's Lord is quite strong. It's that strong moon. But still, it's, you can tell that when he talks, there's something a little bit, you know, it's still kind of like a fantasy in his mind. And so that's the part that I don't really agree with or believe necessarily. And if you think about it, like waiting on extraterrestrials to come and save you is no different from waiting on Jesus to come and save you. You know what I mean? Um, So uh, there's a lot more I could say about Dave Wilcock and his chart. It's really fascinating. Um, It's overall a good chart, though. So I think he is pretty sincere. And I think a lot of what he's experienced, for the most part, has been genuine and true. But I think that he can still be deluded, deluding himself, deceiving himself. Um, 
but it's it's a pretty yeah it's not that bad overall it's not like he has the deceit yoga you know what i mean and he has a good jupiter in the fourth if anything so i think in general he's a a pretty sincere person he's trying to do good work in the world um and this venus mercury yeah he's uh He's been delighted by his Mercury, his research, you know, and the Venus rules the seventh house. So the public has been delighted by his research, you know, like someone like me or other people. Uh, but there still is a lot of restlessness in that where he never feels like he's discovered enough. So, you know, it's to me, it seems like he needs to learn to meditate to, you know, like control his nervous system more um, with R Rahu and Mars and to get to get more involved in his body and his nervous system. But in his mind, he thinks he needs to just research more and more and more um, when he's already done way more research than <laughs> anyone else uh, in this t point in time and space, honestly, in terms of like metaphysics. So it's kind of an interesting chart. Um, yeah, so that's all the charts that I had to go over for this uh, for this video. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks, y'all. Take care.